Hey everyone, morning, how are you doing? Good? Okay, so you all look uh, fresh. So it's really good to be in your class and looking forward to, you know, an interesting time, an interactive time. Also want to uh, welcome all the online students as well. Thank you for connecting today. And I really hope that you will be enriched by the classes. Um, for the online students, uh, sorry about the audio uh, issue in the last class. I think both for Google Classroom and um, uh, e-learning, you had some challenges with the audio. But I think today it's corrected. So hopefully, it will be a better experience. All right, so uh, let's pray. And uh, we can begin. Uh, we usually ask one of the students to pray, but you know, audio, like the Google Classroom students can't hear you, you can't hear them. So I think I'll only pray and then we'll get it. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this beautiful time in your presence. Lord, we thank you for your word because uh, this is the uh, water which cleanses us, Lord. This is the water that prepares us, oh God, to be the kind of... Um, uh, bride that you are coming back for. So Father God, thank you for uh, preparing our hearts. Thank you for teaching us, Lord, your ways, equipping us, oh God, uh, with the things of your kingdom. Uh, Father, especially in the area of prayer, we pray that you will enable us, Lord, to uh, Father, be in sync with your word as well as your spirit. Uh, and Father God, to see your will done here on the earth, Father. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so in the last uh, couple of classes, we were able to talk about the meaning of prayer, what prayer is, what prayer is not. Then uh, in the last class, we discussed that there are different kinds of prayers. Though we use the general term prayer, there are many different kinds of prayers that one could pray. So what are the categories? Anything you can recall from the last class? Prayer of consecration, prayer of asking and receiving, prayer of supplication, thanksgiving, unburdening, okay? prayer of faith, Agreement, excellent. So, repentance, okay. So, 100% recall. I'm happy uh, that you know you're catching all the points. Um, I hope uh, the Google Classroom students as well. You can always keep um, responding on the chat. Uh, otherwise, you know you would miss out on uh, interaction. So, feel free. I look at the chat every now and then. Uh, so, we we though I'm asking the. Uh, People seated here, it will be good if you can also respond to my questions. All right. So we have looked at a couple of uh, types of prayers. So today, there are two more which we will touch upon. And then we will continue uh, and try and look in detail about the prayer of asking and receiving. So uh, here in our notes, if you can turn to that, there is something known as prayer of waiting. Okay. Prayer of waiting. So what is the prayer of waiting? The psalmist seems to know about this kind of prayer. So, you know, he tells himself, wait, I say, on the Lord. In Psalm 27, he says, wait on the Lord. And he writes a lot about um, dwelling in the presence of God, dwelling in the tents of the Lord, Right? Dwelling in the sanctuary of God. Now, we might have a question that if you don't have a petition or if you don't have a request, what's the point of being in the presence of God? Right? Because you got what you need and that's it. Okay, God, bye. See you tomorrow, whatever, 6 a.m. But that's not how prayer works. And I've already shared with us that even worship, Praise, adoration is also a form of prayer because that comes under the category of thanksgiving. Prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, later, we will see the pattern of the Lord's Prayer in which Jesus taught us to pray. He begins with 
our father in heaven hallowed be your name hallowed be your name is what it's worship right it's adoration it's praise it's thanksgiving so thanksgiving is very much a part of prayer so we can be in the presence of god and even if we are not asking for something we could be worshiping we could be thanking which is a part of prayer now the prayer of waiting you could say that it kind of um overlaps on adoration thanksgiving okay as one waits in the presence of god why would you wait otherwise you're worshiping the lord that is one reason but you also see that in a very deep way you could be engaging with the uh, you know the the presence of god while you are with him so sometimes when we are in prayer it may not be that i am actively asking something or i am even adoring or giving thanks it may be none of that but you are just in the presence of god and you are waiting in the presence of god okay that has a lot of value because we see even in the writings of the psalmists they used to do things like that just wait in the presence of god what happens when we wait in the presence of god you know we could study so much about uh, subjects like presence of god god's glory okay we don't understand see we are part of two worlds uh, anyone seen uh, a frog yeah all of us have so what do we call uh, creatures like frogs and crocodiles amphibians right because they live in the water and they also live on the ground so they are part of two worlds similarly though we are part of this natural world we see we touch we feel um we sense in our five senses we are very much alive in this natural world but there is an unseen spiritual world which we are also a part of okay we are alive scriptures tell us to this kingdom of light which is of jesus christ you know the son of god so what happens when we wait in the presence of god there are a lot of dynamics which we may not understand for us in the natural what am i doing i'm just waiting in god's presence so in the natural doesn't make any sense you know for us our generation waiting is waste of time quick quick move next next you know when uh, people ask for things to be done and you you uh, you know say oh how fast do you want it done so there's a term that they use nowadays commonly it's called yesterday so when uh, your teacher tells you to finish your assignment and uh, you ask the teacher the question when do i submit it ma'am teacher will say yesterday okay it simply means do it fast i want it done very very fast as fast as you can do so that's the kind of world we live in so sometimes what happens waiting in the presence of god may seem very meaningless prayer time wait i'm just waiting but it's not so in the spiritual realm so we've got to understand that so somehow for uh, the psalmist they figured it out to wait in the presence of god you see even isaiah isaiah in isaiah chapter 40 there's a scripture here in our notes where you know, he says they that wait upon the lord yeah, isaiah 40 uh, you remember the scripture was 29 hold on yeah was 31 but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength so what happened when somebody waited in the presence of god so waiting in the presence of god is not zoning out you know sometimes we can just sit for one hour and we say oh i just prayed it was a waiting kind of prayer but maybe we slept we're not engaging but that's not the waiting we are talking about we're talking about it's an active engaging you are very much in the presence of god you know your mind is worshiping maybe your, even your physical body you will have a posture uh, with which you are expressing your worship all that is going on so you're actively waiting it's not necessarily 
a time when you're uh, you're saying okay supplications petitions none of that just in god's presence god it's you and me you're waiting in that way what does isaiah say he says they that wait upon the lord shall mount up with wings as eagles so we can come to one conclusion you know based on what we just read what is that conclusion when we are waiting in god's presence his strength is imparted to us yes or no somehow when you come out of that time of prayer you become stronger spiritually you become stronger maybe in your will in in your emotions you went in very broken but you're coming out very strong okay so how does this kind of prayer help it strengthens us the prayer of waiting strengthens us that's how we look at it then uh, there are uh, other passages over here i'm not going to go through every single passage here um but these passages also encourage us there's a passage from isaiah 30 verse 15 where it says in quietness you know is your strength so it says that in god's presence okay when we go to seek him that's the place from where we draw our strength and similarly here's another passage from psalm 131 verses 1 to 3 where the psalmist gives this picture he says if you look at a child a weaned child okay um it's the mother is carrying the child close to her chest so he says sometimes god i'm like that i'm just with you and that strengthens me that helps me so the psalmist talks about just being with god just waiting in his presence uh, and what do we gain out of that if you have that question uh, scriptures are very clearly showing us that you gain strength you become a stronger person somehow right so it's never wasted time i know that nowadays you have all these movements around the world where people worship they have 24 bar 7 worship intercession and sometimes you wonder like how long can i stretch you know just being in god's presence um what are we going to do so there are times when there's intercession so okay you you understand oh there's intercession there's there could be preaching of god's word okay something else is occupying the time there's worship but then you know when you look at all these movements there are also extended periods of just waiting upon the lord right you're singing songs which you're receiving in the spirit you're singing spontaneous songs and you're just waiting in the presence of god and you wonder how can people do this what is the meaning of this for somebody who's looking at it from outside what a waste of time but biblically when we look at times like this when you're waiting in the presence of the lord we need to understand there's a realm we, which we cannot see and what scriptures are telling us is in that place of quietness in that place of rest is our strength so we are actually drawing from god's strength and we are able to um take that into our everyday life so from the spiritual to the natural there's a drawing of the strength of god so there are certain ministries that also talk about their experience how when they started all this 24 bar 7 worship prayer uh yeah waiting on the lord and you no know, one particular very famous ministry from the united states they say they started this this kind of uh, 24 bar 7 um uh, worship and uh, out of that god gave them the ability to start so many other practical ministries like you know feeding the poor uh, taking care of the orphans uh, supplying food in in certain areas so lots of other ministries came out but for something like 30 30 years they have this waiting on the lord you know worshiping god intercession a combination of things like that so uh, the or simply what i'm trying to tell all of us is it's not a waste of time when we are waiting in the presence of god either individually or as a group never look at it as i'm just you know filling up my time no something spiritual is happening when we are waiting in the presence of lord and another very key thing is waiting is not uh, you know being absent 
waiting is a very active engagement with god so waiting is not being absent please understand that but when you're actively engaging with god maybe in your spirit maybe you're not having enough words to say in those moments even then you're engaging with god and you can expect god's strength to be deposited in your spirit can i uh, particularly want to encourage those who are on campus the supernatural hour which you have uh, you know it's such a precious time actually never think of it as um, just one hour you know what are we doing no don't look at it that way because god is doing something in you now you would till today we have some students who uh, call us and who tell us and they say ma'am those times when we used to worship so those times i received a word i uh, this happened that happened it continues to strengthen them even until now okay so that's a corporate waiting upon the lord but even individually in your personal lives just make time you're just waiting upon the lord uh, maybe how do we do it if you can just play some worship music and then begin to pray uh, and also have some moments where you're just engaging like in the spirit with god okay so that is the prayer of waiting next is the prayer of watching isaiah 62 verses 6 and 7 it is there in the notes it says i have set watchmen on your walls o jerusalem they shall never hold their peace day or night you who make mention of the lord do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes jerusalem a praise in the earth okay so here we are told that god has set watchmen on the walls what is the task of watchmen guard protect protect take care anything else there's a gate right outside your campus so what does the gate do what what does the watchman who stands there do open close so opening the gate for whom everybody anybody on the road he'll open the gate yeah who belong to this campus he opens the gate others he doesn't open the gate right if an intruder comes in he will never open the gate he'll be careful enough to say no come tomorrow or get permission or something like that scriptures tell us you know who are god's watchmen we are god's watchmen okay how do we become watchmen when we are in prayer because when we pray what happens is our prayers are like opening the gate closing the gate right so it's not just prayers even our declarations even our taking of authority right so all those things are like allowing and disallowing we stop certain things but we allow certain things what are the things that we stop in this case in this scripture it's like we are told jerusalem there are watchmen on your walls or or, or in other words prayer warriors for the city watchmen for jerusalem how does it help to have watchmen over a city so they guard the city in spiritual matters so they will stop things like you know anything that satan plans satan might plan okay we'll put some sickness on the people we'll put some crimes you know we'll we'll um, uh, have confusion among the people strife poverty so so many things satan wants to put on the people but when we pray we are like watchmen okay and, and watchmen an attitude of watchmen is alertness no watchman is paid to sleep in the night they are there somebody is there that means oh okay no problem they are there somebody is there they are taking care in the same way prayer of watching is a prayer of alertness where we are praying and we are saying god i pray for protection 
maybe you want to pray protection over your own life or your own family for you know different reasons or uh, let's say parents you pray protection over your children so what are these prayers doing these prayers are acting like you know guarding them it's like a fence around them we'll study more about it you know a little later in detail so prayer of watching are prayers of alertness so where we are praying and we are you know waiting on the lord like god you need to do this you have to do this we are waiting with you let it be done so in that manner even when jesus was in the garden of gethsemane what did he tell his disciples yeah watch watch and pray watch with me one hour be alert what did they do opposite they nicely slept and jesus like ayo what to do with you people i told you to be awake even one hour you can't be awake and pray so that's the way in which you know he he um uh, instructs them rebukes them because he wanted somebody to be alert with him in his difficult moments right so those are the prayers of watching um and particularly when we uh, come to you know things that are unfolding in the world today we need to be alert to pray for our city we need to be alert to pray for our nation uh, pray be alert to pray for different things that are going on in the world so the prayer of watching is also a kind of prayer which is not um, you know inconsistent we need to continuously stand guard because that's how watchmen guard a place so continuously till those things are accomplished we keep praying we keep praying so some people ask you know what is this every day you are you, are, you have a prayer point to pray for the city how long you are going to pray for the city you know already you pray 20 years you are praying again for the city hasn't god already answered prayer of believing if you believed it you received it forget it you know get a new prayer list it doesn't work like that when it comes to prayer of watching sometimes you bring the same thing over and over and over again so the watchmen on the walls for jerusalem they would have prayed they would have asked god every day god your protection your guidance your leading they were alert for the city so some of these prayers of watching whether they are for personal life or for um you know corporate needs they go on repeatedly okay so that is the nature of the prayer of watching so i think i will uh, stop with that so we've understood now that um you know we need to uh, be alert in our prayers so one more quick addition to the uh, you know thoughts that i have just shared why do you think we must be alert in prayer or alert in prayer also means that you don't neglect prayer you you understand hey i need to pray there is a good reason why i need to pray so why should we be alert in prayer give me a reason which i didn't give so far okay uh, because god might want to reveal something to us okay sure sure but alertness so that is more of you know a desire interest god you are going to reveal to me but i'm saying alertness alertness is like you just watch that there be no intruder why do you why do you think we should have prayers of watching like that with alertness ha huh? protection true why protection why do we need protection okay so i got the right answer on the chat but i'll just wait for sorry okay fight we have a fight um which is not against flesh and blood okay yes
okay okay so uh, as reverence to god so when we are praying we need to be alert as honor and reverence to god good uh, the answer yes not to enter into temptation okay uh, yeah so you're all telling me like what it is but why i'm not getting an answer wait hold on let me just look at the chat here i'll come back i'll give you the answer anyway um okay here we have answers like the enemy is working then thief comes to steal kill and destroy okay just one person has written satan that is the answer i was looking for satan is a roaring lion so temptation war uh, distraction you know all of that comes from an enemy there is an enemy that we must not forget so in this life another reason why prayer becomes so essential is because it's spiritual warfare ephesians 6 when you read it there are all these uh you know parts of the armor that god tells us to put on and then towards the end you read praying always you know ephesians 6:18 what we read earlier because even prayer is a weapon against the enemy so because there is an enemy what kind of an enemy is he scriptures tell us that he's like a roaring lion waiting he's waiting to pounce on any one that he can get any one he can devour and because of that reason we are asked to be very alert in prayer first peter 4 7 it says but the end of all things is at hand therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers so as the days go by we know that satan is already defeated he can't do you know uh, he cannot defeat the believer that much we all understand jesus has defeated satan on the cross then why do we in an alert way pray and you know ask for wisdom protection all that against this defeated enemy because he still continues some of his tactics and as you pointed out temptation you know confusion accusation strife all those things he can just you know put it upon the people which is why god told us be alert if we are not alert how to be alert pray okay so somebody in the chat has asked how to watch how to watch so that is a question how are we supposed to watch we are supposed to watch through prayer krisha okay so as i am praying as i am praying for different things that the holy spirit puts on my heart i'm actually watching for example you know a time of prayer so uh, just i think was it last week or a couple of days ago i was just praying generally i have a routine you know time of prayer but this day i don't know why and moreover i had free you know some extra, extra time that day i was praying and i felt don't stop keep praying so then i'm looking at the clock i was like okay fine you know let's go for another uh, thing let me extend it so i finished i kind of did another round to the same extent and i felt like no don't stop pray so i prayed more very unusually i don't pray that long but i was having these some of these uh, impressions on my mind you know regarding uh, my family that okay you need to pray for so and so in your home and this and that now nothing was happening you know like nothing that i can no- see noticeably but i just went with the leading of the holy spirit so it's my prayer of watching where i'm speaking protection i'm standing in the presence of the lord for what he lays on my heart so in this case you know it was family but maybe there are times when we are praying for the city and you just know holy spirit is putting it on your heart and saying okay pray 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 you can you just can't say no you got to keep praying for what 
the spirit of god puts on your heart so how do we watch like that we have to be very much in sync with the holy spirit uh, krisha uh, now maybe some of us might say okay i'm not i'm not yet in that place where uh, i can clearly hear from the holy spirit that you know, pray for this pray for that what should i do very simple about different matters know what god's word says for example city god's word you know jeremiah 29:7 it says pray for the peace of the city where i have uh, brought you you can just pray what you know pray your understanding of the word of god when you don't have all these things of oh holy spirit is telling me if you're not if you're not being led in that sense just pray what you know okay i'm supposed to pray for the peace of the city that is my prayer of watching i sit i pray lord i pray for peace in this city i pray against every you know uh, communal uh, tension i pray against uh, you know confusion quarrels among leaders so i'm just praying for peace even in this way krisha either prompted by the holy spirit or just based on the word of god we can pray so that is how you pray the prayer of watching all right so i think i'll stop here regarding types of prayer uh, any more questions thoughts all right yeah so can we move forward then we'll go to the next chapter okay so chapter number 5 this is about praying a believing prayer praying a believing prayer so among all the prayers that we pray this one uh like even the young believers understand because the way we look at prayer is okay ask god he will give it to you and the prayer of asking and receiving the prayer of asking and receiving is a prayer which is applicable throughout our journey at any given point maybe when we are young believers we don't know what you know our, our purpose is in life so then we ask god god show me the purpose that you have for me give me understanding reveal to me make a way for me so prayers are like that maybe let's say god has revealed his plan he's revealed his purpose to us then we pray prayers like god you know give me um uh, a, a deeper understanding of your word establish me in your word show me your ways right so what's happening again you're asking you're asking so that you can receive then god begins to equip us in our lives we say okay god you know i really desire to serve you open doors for me to serve you then god puts different visions you know on our hearts and he says okay i want you to do this and that so then you start praying for those things you say oh, okay god wants me to start uh, you know some kind of a revival ministry okay i'm going to start praying for that so when you start praying for that ministry what happens again lot of asking and receiving uh you need you need a plan so you ask god god give me the plan so god tells you okay in 5 years this is how your ministry is going to look you're going to um, you know start off uh, with an office in this particular place uh, in the maybe in india or outside i'm going to take you to this place plant you there there you will have an office then you will be like okay god thank you let me start there and then god says you need people and you start praying for people okay god send people god send resources so it's like never ending asking and receiving is part of our journey no matter where we are so how do we do it right now what if we ask for something and we don't receive it we've already touched on this earlier maybe there have been times where you know we have asked and we've not got it 
there can be many reasons why we did not receive those answers okay now if we did not receive those answers maybe we have had to face some disappointments and overcome those disappointments but here's the way to look at it everything is a learning experience in our lives if we have not received answers for some prayer don't think that whole episode or that phase of your life is a waste it's not just say holy spirit what can i learn from that season reveal to me what is it that i could have done better okay now <coughs> we'll talk about faith and all that in asking and receiving but it's not to put blame on us that oh i didn't have faith so god didn't do it it's not like that but to be honest just reflect okay maybe if i had you know asked for counsel or something i would have made a better decision so you see there's always a lesson to learn even if there are prayers which we did not see answers to okay so we will study about asking and receiving uh, and the good thing about studying this in detail is at least you know the principles and you can use the principles okay now even after having done this if at all you know something doesn't come through it doesn't mean that the principles are wrong no because you see god's word never changes if at all the answers don't come through maybe there's something which we are missing so in your journey always say okay god next time i'll make sure you know i do it like this just learn just learn and get better okay so this is not like uh, oh keys i'm giving you some keys use the keys every time it will work there's no formula you have to trust god and in your personal understanding the prayer of asking and receiving keep growing in it okay come on now let's let's see what are the um, helpful principles in scripture that will enable us to uh, get answers to our prayer first is pray with a clear conscience pray with a clear conscience so psalm 66 and verse 18 can somebody quickly turn to that and read it uh, i would request the google classroom students to please turn to these scriptures okay wonderful so if i regard iniquity in my heart then god will not hear me so why is it that some prayers don't get heard or don't get registered in god's mind one key reason is we don't have a clear conscience there is a sinful heart behind the prayer so maybe you know our intention is wrong if let's say i am praying god bless my ministry prayer sounds very good but if in my heart i have competition then what happens god sees the heart right so with the with a conscience which is not clear before god it's very difficult for me to pray a believing prayer and receive its answer so there there should be no iniquity and the holy spirit can convict us of sin or maybe or maybe uh, you know god is convicting us of sin in some other area i mean ministry we are doing fine but in our personal life there are things that the holy spirit is convicting us about and we've not dealt with it in that case can the prayer be answered again doubtful because we don't carry a clear conscience before god okay so uh, 1 john 3 21 to 22 i want to request somebody to uh, quickly turn to that and uh, in the meantime there was a question did you raise your hand yeah
Hmm. Okay, sure. So uh, we have an um, a point here where uh, you know we we need to have faith without doubt. Okay, so that is when you receive your answers to prayer. All right. So um, uh, if somebody has that scripture open, one John three twenty one to twenty two. Okay, so Apostle John, he says, if our heart does not condemn us, then we have confidence with God uh, because we do, you know, righteous, uh, right, righteous acts of faith. We are walking obediently to God. So then what is the result of a righteous walk? Your heart does not condemn you. So we all have this experience, right? I'm not talking about a guilt induced by Satan as an accusation. That's not the guilt that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the conviction of the Holy Spirit in us. You know, sometimes, for example, uh, let's say you know, we are having, uh, I'm doing some teamwork, and uh, I happen to quarrel with my team member. Okay, and the work is going very good. So. Uh, every day we are working on a project, it's going very good. And after the day of the quarrel, the next day, I just don't feel right. That person is still there in the team. We are working and, you know, I, I feel like I, I'm talking politely to that person. But in my heart, you know, I, I have all these, like, what kind of a person, you know, what is this? How can they do this? So I'm still carrying all of uh, uh, that bitterness against that person. And as I'm working, what's happening? My conscience, right? It's, it's, it's just not clear. It's not clear. So if your heart does not condemn, in this uh, situation, what's happening? My own heart is condemning me. Why can't you just say sorry to that person? And I'm saying, no, I, I don't want to say sorry. Then what happens? My heart is condemning me. See, you know what is right, but you're not doing it. So when I go to pray, you know, I sit in my prayer time, same thing comes back. You know, sometimes it just doesn't leave you. It's just like a reminder again and again and again. Why are you not dealing with that, uh, you know, uh, uh, team member of yours? You need to say sorry. You need... So till my heart is condemning me, I can't pray a believing prayer. Because there's so much of, you see, disturbance, right? Disturbance and confusion. Sometimes there can be things in our lives which are not incident based. Maybe this is just like maybe some wrong relationship or wrong something, but we're still worshiping the Lord. We're still doing everything. But as we're coming to worship God, our heart is condemning us and saying, you're not on the right track. This is not correct before God. So what happens? It's very difficult to pray a prayer of, you know, believing with like, you know, your conscience your heart is divided like that so that's why you need that undivided heart where my your heart doesn't condemn you at least when you come in the presence of god you know out of you know your own ability to the best of your knowledge to the best of your ability you have done everything that the holy spirit told you to do now are we perfect we are not nobody is perfect but when the holy spirit convicts us of something According to the word of God, we need to be obedient. What, did, uh, what does scripture say? God desires obedience and not sacrifice. So these small little things in our relationship with God matter. So always maintain a clear conscience. You know, check your own life. Check my own life. Okay, is there anything that my heart is condemning me about? The words I spoke, my behavior, my relationships, my finances, my ministry. So make sure everything is clear. With such a clear conscience, when I pray, what is the other part in that passage? We have confidence before God. If our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. So that's the way to pray. We need to come before God 
with a clear conscience and you know 1 peter 3 it says that god's ears are turned to the prayers of the righteous so when you can look at it this way when we walk in the path of righteousness our prayers will get heard because god is attentive to the prayers of the righteous okay so a right walk with god is essential to walk you know regularly in answered prayer answered prayer answered prayer answered prayer right if we are walking with the lord in righteousness so carry a clear conscience that's our responsibility okay so next point here i'll do this next point and then you know we'll take a 10 minute break uh, jesus taught us to pray using his name okay so uh, let's read the passage john 14 verses 13 and 14 somebody can you please read it hmm okay so uh jesus has told us to ask in his name okay and what did he say if you ask anything in my name i will do it for you so praying in the name of jesus is something that we've been taught to do by jesus himself there's one more passage we'll quickly see it john 16 23 and 24 okay great so you see here about asking and receiving how to ask you've not asked anything in my name ask the father in my name and he will give you so how do we ask god jesus told us when you ask god ask in the name of jesus ask in the name of jesus how does it help to ask in the name of jesus i have shared this earlier the name of jesus carries authority so when i ask in jesus name there is an authority you know which which moves the heart of the father which you know uh, supplies releases the supplies of heaven so we don't understand but there is an authority in the name of jesus just for example you know if here in college uh, uh, let's say you go to ask some notes uh, from the person in charge at the office and they say i can't give it to you right you you show me a letter or something so you take a letter from the administrator of the college and say see i got a letter from the administrator can you please give me the notes they'll immediately respond because you're asking in the name of the administrator you got it so it carries authority and jesus knew that when it comes to the spiritual realm when it comes to the kingdom of god there is an authority in the name of jesus so when we ask he said you ask the father in the name of jesus he will do it for you okay so that's the way in which we pray a believing prayer so with that i am going to uh, stop we can come back and uh, pick up from here i'll quickly look at a question at times even if we spend time in his presence praying and seeking god a flesh old man comes out either in our reaction or words due to difficult situations people how to be an overcomer always okay a uh, good question uh, jashan i would say uh you know overcoming the flesh for overcoming the flesh two things we need the work of the word and that's what um um uh, you know paul wrote in the book of romans be renewed by uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that is one thing we need to have a renewed mind and that's going to take some time so that's how you overcome the flesh second is through the holy spirit so the way we crucify our flesh is by the work of the holy spirit so we have to allow the holy spirit to work in us so these are the two ways in which we can um, we can tame or uh, tame is not the right thing to do with the flesh you have to crucify the 
flesh. Okay, so that's the short answer, but uh, hopefully you'll get much more from you know all the APC Bible College courses. Okay, thank you, and we'll meet in ten minutes.